Hey guys, hey guys, thanks for tuning in for today what I'm going to cover as part one uh, It's five key main points, right? I know many of you are just thinking, ah, no man, I want to get straight into it and let's discuss um, uh, Which are the ones that we want to get into and that's where I started But I realized that, you know, you need to understand a lot more things uh, Before you even decide if you want to get into the crowd loans And how much you want to get into the crowd loans So because of that uh, I took a step back and I did a lot of re research and I'm going to share that with you today. So the five things that we're going to cover for today is largely, firstly, we want to be able to introduce what is the parachain auction to everybody and what the crowd loan is, just a brief introduction. Then um, the next two parts are going to be key. All right. So these are the two parts and I'll remind you again when I get there um, that it's extremely key and we have to take away in our considerations of how, in, how involved we want to be uh, with this crowd loan. So I'm going to go through a little bit of differences between uh, the Kusama and the Polkadot crowd loan. Um, there are two main differences there. Um, then of course I'm going to go through the implications of it as well So basic, ba basically with this data or this knowledge that I'm going to share with you guys How are you going to take that to your own, in to your own investments And then lastly, uh, I'm going to just end off with the conclusion A little bit of what I'm going to do next um, And what are the key takeaways for you guys to take into your own investments Yeah, What's the uh, parachain auction, right? Because I think this is really really new for all for us, um, it only came out with the Kusama and the Polkadot plo uh, blockchain. Uh, so for those of you who are new or don't really understand what you're getting into, the parachain auction is basically the method that uh, the Polkadot blockchain or the Polkadot ecosystem as a whole have decided to determine which blockchains that they want uh, as part of their parachain slots. So this is a very new way of doing things just like I shared with you because this is how they kind of control supply and demand um, because many people want to get onto the polka dot uh, parachains right but this is the way of how they control that supply and what happens out of that is that it forces the many of these projects to be innovative to be competitive and to put in their best efforts in terms of trying to prove their worth to be able to earn a parachain slot and as a result of that, two things happen, right? So one, we as end users, we definitely benefit from it because as you can see, there are quite tangible and substantial rewards that we are able to get because these projects are now trying to entice you uh, to put in your money with them essentially so that they can get a slot on the parachain. But the other thing that happens is it's an information overload that's going to happen now because there's just too much going on. There's so, there's so many projects offering so many different things and that's why we are here. The project that comes out and they are able to bid the highest amount of money or in this case Polkadot, they will win a slot. And that's why they started this parachain crowd loans, right? So that's the next thing. So what exactly is a crowd loan then? So I want you to think of it as uh, Kickstarter, right? I'm not sure if you guys have got anything about, um, from Kickstarter before, but, but it's basically like a crowdsourcing kind of a thing whereby uh, people contribute towards an idea or contribute towards a product, right? And that's how they kind of fund their parachain auction. So these projects will sort of crowdfund from us as end, u u as end users and as a result of, of that, your polka dot get locked up, right? Because you give it to them and they'll take it and they'll put it into the auction to be able to win a parachain. And when they go live, they will take some of the... Uh, they, so when they go live, they'll be able to then give you rewards because they are now live and they can do things. They can continue to develop. So, um, but the key thing to note here is that uh, there is while they are allowed to crowdfund, there is no standard structure as to how they want to offer their rewards or how they want to do it if they want to do it through direct means or through a third party means so then again it comes back to a lot of confusion here because there's just so many options that is available for us as end users all right so i'm going to move on next into um, the difference between the kusama and the polkadot crowd loan and that's basically the foundation or the basics that is what's really going to structure all these that i'm going to share with you for you to determine if it's even worth it for you to enter into these crowd loans right 
Okay, so the two differences, alright, between the Kusama and the Polkadot crowd loan and how that really affects uh, the rewards that we are going to get is two things. And the first one is the lock-in period. So I think you should already know, if you don't, if you look at Kusama, the leasing period is at 48 weeks. But if you go to Polkadot, that's 96 weeks. So I did a count that is about 22 months as compared to 48 weeks, which is 11 months. So it's essentially twice the time. All right, so that's what you got to know um, that when you go for the Polkadot crowd loan, essentially to keep things simple, you're locking in your dot for up to 22 months. And the second thing is um, the rewards that they are offering. All right, so I would say for Kusama, it is absolute so i'll use the word absolute but for polka dot i would say the rewards are relative okay and i'll ex it means it's like a weighted means kind of thing so I'll, I'll explain that a little bit more um yeah so the login period right um what's the Im implication that's gonna have on us okay so i'm i guess we're all gonna agree that 96 weeks is a long time and one thing that uh, if you've been follow following the group or, sh or Shukri quite, quite tightly, you know that winter is coming, right? So we want to be able to think about it, right? You're going to lock in your dot for up to 96 weeks and winter is coming, which means potentially you might not have access to your dot and you're not able to capitalize on your capital gains when you want to because it's locked up, right? So this is something that you want to think about it. So this is when i just wanted to bring your attention to the bitcoin chart a little bit because we want to discuss win winter right and where we are exactly at this cycle okay so this is when it starts to get interesting so i'm just going to bring back time to where we were um the the last time round. I, I think back in 2016 when there was a halving there all right as well as um so that was the last time round before the last halving in 2020, May 2020, which we are kind of in the run of things now, right? So the important thing here to note is this. Um, yeah, yesterday we reached a new all-time high. If you haven't got a whole slew of Twitter notifications from many people tweeting about that, then yeah, we hit a new all-time high, right? So I would say the real bull run really started towards the end of September and we are kind of like in the run of things now basically right so if i were to go back a little bit to where we were the last time round i would say that we are kind of like here now so i would say there was a little bit of a cor correction and then boom this this whole run started right and if you think about it this started around the same time uh, early november to mid november and things sort of cooled down um towards the end of the year so you can think about it as maybe a two a, a two to three month window if you also take into account um this all right so if you didn't get out at the top which i would say most of us wouldn't be able to and we shouldn't try to you would have another opportunity here right whereby you cannot think that price is going back up before another huge dump but i would say this is kind of like the last chance right it's, it's the last chance for you to be able to get out here so if you think about it as a whole from November to Jan, I would say that's about a three month time period. And this little dip and this pump now, it's, it's kind of where we are now, right? So I'll, yeah, I would say this is a little up here, but this is the last correction before this huge pump. So we are, we are kind of somewhere here. We are on the way up and we started in November as well. So if you think about it from this point of view, I'm not just thinking about a dot crowd loan kind of things, but as a whole, I if I kind of always go back and I refer to history, right? Because I would say, um, I think we've been proven time and time again, even though things are not the same, but crypto is really seasonal. And at the end of the day, you want to take some reference, right? Because you know that it's in one way or another, it's going to repeat itself. So with that being said, I probably want to be able to exit most of my holdings by Jen. Because if you have a look here, um, look at where we were in Feb 2018, right? After this massive pump, this is essentially the start of the crypto winter because 
pump, dump, and then we were doing no nothing. And I would expect that to con to continue again. So pump up to, I don't know, somewhere really, really high. Some people were talking about 100 over 1,000 for Bitcoin, but I'm gonna put my money um, with what Sh with what Shukri has said as well as with all this history that is showing me that this is gonna come and it's gonna stay this way for a really really long time right and it essentially did nothing until mid of May right and until mid of May before it started to pump again right so exactly like what uh, crypto Veda X have said the more things change the more they stay the same right so this is the cue for me where the next halving then that's when i kind of want to get in because in may yeah things are still low so i want to be low low loading up on all my uh, bags before the start of the cycle so yeah so essentially from that wind from that wind winter and all the way to the next half half next halving nothing essentially happened okay so i want you guys to keep this in mind because essentially if you do think about it if you were to lock in your dot now right so if i were to go back here and yeah you were to lock in your your dot so it's gonna end november 18 right and then you are going uh so let's say you are into Ar akala or moonbeam because obviously that's the two biggest one and then they win it and your 96 weeks start right so i did that cal that cal calculation for you guys and Essentially, you're only going to get it unlocked uh, in September 2023, right? So what does that mean? So that means that September 2023 is kind of like six months before the next halving, which is in on, on May 6, 2024. So again, the more things change, the more things stay the same, right? So if I'm going to take a reference here and say that, okay, in May was the last halving, what, six months before, in November or December in 2019 essentially price did nothing right there's nothing like no, nothing is going on at all so you're, you are going to be getting back your dot coins in a time um, where essentially the market is going to be well I wouldn't say in a bear it probably have re recovered a little bit but it's not going an anywhere right so that's something for you to take note, right? So essentially, this is the implications of the 96 weeks lockout that you are going to face, right? You're going to lock it up. You cannot take your capital profits. Um, and looking at historical point of view, you're going to get back your tokens at a point whereby the market is doing nothing and you're not going to be able to, let's say, cash out your pro your profits at a time here where it's, where it's going to be booming, right? So that's ex exactly what I said. Uh, we are here here we are here now so yeah you might want to cash out and, and run or do you want to take a chance for this to happen right so this is something that we have to take into account so that's just the first thing that we want to discuss here the other thing is we also want to look at what's in it for us or what's the rewards that are available and i think i use the words absolute for ksm and, re and relative for dot right um that's that's sim simply because if you uh, again um i've been looking into a lot of these these things and of course there are many discussions about the crowd loan strat strategy as well um but the key thing here is this just look for whale and you will realize that there's a lot of talk going around the dot crowd loan being not as profitable as Ku as kusama and it's just for whales relating back to absolute and relative um yeah so already pe people are saying it's just for whales and if you s if i were to scroll down a little bit more this is what they say it's not just for the whales but dot is the more safe two-year exit plan which is true i wouldn't say the re the rewards based on some basic assumptions that are made is bad but ksm is the one year mo money maker all right so what exactly does this mean the tokenomics are a little bit dif different because for kusama the re rewards are ab absolute so what it means yeah so exactly like what uh 
crypto Vader X has said, the Canary network normally does better. So what this means is, for example, the values that you see here is absolute, which means if you put in one KSM, you're definitely going to get back 72 near. So which, which means for the many of us who have uh, participated in the Karura or the Moon River uh, crowd loan, this is what we would have got. We put in one KSM, we're gonna get 22 or more, depending on all the bold, bold, on the bold, on the bonuses that we are able to get through your referrals and stuff like that. And if you go in for Moon River, it's 14 plus. So you know you're definitely gonna get that for sure, right? So that how they achieve that is because they have a cap on the total rewards, which means I'm only gonna be able to give out this amount of Moon Ri River, for example, and. It's first, it's first come first serve. So the bad side of that is that if you are late to the party, then I'm sorry, you are gone, right? You're not able to, part to participate. Um, but the pros of that is that then the people who participated get solid, solid returns, right? So if I were to compare that with DOT now, and I'm looking at the rewards again, all right, it's easy to be fooled to think that, oh, um, it's, we are going to be able to get more now because essentially um, the reward pool is much bigger. So Akala, which is essentially the dot ver version of Kar Karura, we had 11 mil here and we had 170 mil here, right? And then for Moon River, you had 3 mil here and then you had uh, 100 mil here and you are thinking now, whoa, this is amazing. I'm going to pour all my dot in here now because it's going to be able to give me huge, huge, huge re returns, right? But hey, this is when things get interesting because if you look deeper into it, um, the reward here, it's, ac it's, ac it's actually your contribution divided by the total contributed times the reward pool so think about that right i don't know how many of you have been into ideal platforms that offer allocation by the same way all right i, I think avex launcher was one of them i'm not entirely sure but is or essentially if you are in bsc pad uh, i think at one point they were giving away guaranteed allocations along these these lines right based on how much you stake divided by the total contributed times the amount of reward that is available and i remember my bsc pad allocations were like five bucks this is exactly the same thing that's happening with dot right and again going back to red to reddit here that's why i think a lot of people were speaking about um, um, it's only for the whales because obviously if you are a dot whale uh, and you can dump a lot of dot in there then you're gonna get the lion's share of the rewards right and don't get me wrong these are solid projects that are on but the question now here is um, yeah do you want to lock in your dot for little rewards I'm assuming here or are you gonna want to wait for the pump to come knowing that winter is coming you are in the middle of a pump and you want to take your profits on a capital gain right so that's that's something that we are always uh, discussing here with regards to the reward so that's what I mean by it's not absolute like Kusama it's relative here and we really need to think hard about that so I'm just gonna move on to the last thing I wanted to discuss today which is um, we covered time frame, we covered uh, rewards, and but of course we also do want to consider the potential of DOT in this run, right? Versus the crowd loan. So there's only two options when you're here. At this crossroad, it's either you get in, into the crowd loans or the other way is you do, don't invest so much into the crowd loans or you totally don't at all and you sell off your DOT, right? And we want to discuss that. We want to discuss um, at this point, uh, where can we go with DOT? There are many influencers that have already been discussing that DOT may easily get up to $150 plus minus. Uh, people are extremely bull with the crowd with the crowd loan. Um, but yeah, I'm also thinking now after I've done my own research if that is actually possible. Um, I'm having a little bit of doubts about that. But I mean, uh, DOT still has some time to show that it is ready to pump a little bit more. But 
Uh, yeah, so I'll share that a little bit more in a bit. But yeah, so there are speculations out there that DOT can get to $150 or more. So Crypto Vader X, do you think that's, that's possible? Uh, $150? Do you think it's uh, possible? I mean, considering its price action in the past 7 to, 4, to 14 days, um, yeah, I have my reservation. Don't think it's um, as parabolic as KSM. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to share that in this sense. So if I'm going to share, yeah, so I think 80 to 100, definitely more possible, right? So I'm going to again go back. The more things change, the more things they stay the same, right? So um, I'm going to need a, a one-year chart here so it's much clearer, right? So look at this, all right? Um, the, the Kusama crowd loans were announced in June, all right, in early June. So that's that's some somewhere around here, end May to uh, to early June. So the key thing here that I want you guys to, to take note is, yeah, there was a first pump, all right, but I wouldn't say that this was because of the crowd loan in total because I think at, at this time, not much announcements on the crowd loans were being made yet and it was quite a new concept. Um, yeah, so I think div the developments were the one that were really pushing this one up because we always knew that Kusama is going to go live ahead of DOT and I think they made the most uh, um, of the run be because of that. I think they were doing a lot of things and then I think we all know May, right? And May was like mayhem where it really totally, totally just, just dump, right? And we knew that uh, this was kind of like a... I wouldn't call it a flash crash, but it was really a crash and a correction in May. And I think a lot of people were wondering what's, what's going on. Many people left the market. But the point is this, with the crowd loans, it, even at Kusama costing about $260 or so, it did a 2x, right? So I, I would say this, this, this second pump is kind of like um, due to the crowd loans because the crowd loans started, I think, in early June. Um, just let me check that. Uh, for Kusama, we started mid of June, right? So you can see mid of June is somewhere here. So right at, at the peak, people were buying it because uh, be, because they really, really want, wanted to get in there, right? To participate in, in, in the crowd loan. And again, these were probably the people who said, nah, I don't want to have anything to do with the crowd loan. I probably got in at $50 or lesser. And they probably decided, nah, I don't want to have anything to do with this. I have my 10, 15, 20x and I'm getting out. Boom. And then it dumped, right? And then now we're slowly on our way up again. So yeah, it got about 100% or about 2x, right? So I'm going to go back to the dot chart here and maybe we have a look at the 90 day thing. All right. So when did they announce that they were going to be an, an, uh, they were going to be going live with the crowd loans? I would say probably mid of October, right? So probably somewhere around when it was here, I think about $35 or so. Yeah. So, okay, let's, let's, let's call it here. So $33, right, was when it was announced. And if I were to go back again and say, when did this pump come? It came about, I would say prob probably about three weeks before the crowd loans came live. Um, yeah, so the crowd loans is exactly, um, it, it's going to go live kind of formally, officially this Thursday, right? But my point is this, when they announced it back here, it was about $30 over dollars and Kosama did about 100x, uh, no, not 100x, I wish it did, but it did about 100%, per percent, um, so 2x, right? And that's where kind of where we are heading towards at this point in time. And the crowd loans are about to get started. So you can kind of see where I'm going at, right? Um, um, yeah, um, people are talking about 150x, but if anything and anybody wa wanted to get into DOT, it would be now because who would want to be missing out on Akala, on Moonbeam and they started quite a couple of days ago now, about 5 days or more and these are the contributions that they have to date with all the bo bonuses and stuff so that, that's, that's where I'm driving at because I'm not entirely sure I think 100% is kind of where we are at now and the biggest names for the crowd loans are out and yet, price isn't really pumping huge, huge, huge amounts now. Um, but with that being said, on Thursday, when, when we get on, on to part two, right, um, 
that's when the crowd loans will officially be live. So I would say this is kind of like a crunch period for DOT and I will definitely be keeping my eyes on it. The question that I have here is, is this the limit contrary to what the speculations are? There's an argument both ways for the DOT price to either pump or kind of be lackluster. That's what I'm trying to say because it's an open cap for DOT crowd loan. It's not like Kusama whereby it's fixed, right? Um, which, which, which means to say that um, if it hits this amount, that's it, I'm sorry. I can't take any more. For DOT, people can just keep pouring their DOT in and in and in and in. And that is actually a reason for DOT to pump, right? Because essentially you're encouraging more people and higher amounts. Um, but we're not seeing that yet. But yet, at the same time, the other side of the story is because of the same reason like I shared with the rewards being, re re being relative, people are staying away from it because they would rather prefer their capital gains, right? So I'm definitely keeping my eyes peeled on the Polkadot price. Those of you who are sitting on many access on Polkadot, you have to keep this in mind, right? Because we are all investing for a, re a reason. It's potentially financial freedom or yeah, in one way or another, it, it may take up many different definitions, but everybody wants to be fi financially free, right? So when you have made enough money to achieve that, work when you want, not worry about money, take the money and run, right? You can leave a little bit in it and that's what you may choose to do with your with the with some of your polka dot but that's that's the thing you want to take your money and run but the question you always want to ask you will always ask yourself is but if i take out now what if it pumps to 50x then i'm going to lose all that gain right but you got to take into account that profits not taken are not yours and life-changing losses are too so with the money that you have, you'll be able to pursue other financial avenues and make money more consistently, right? But in this exactly relates to crypto as well, right? We know that in crypto, one year in crypto is seven years in stocks. When I started, IDO was so hot. I'm not saying that it's not hot now, but look at how much it has cooled down because of all the vesting, because of all the re retail coming in, things are getting oversubscribed. And it's probably kind of not the best way to make money now unless you are a whale but nfts came about right and this is the next big thing about how everybody can make the quickest money and yeah so when you think about it yeah you are thinking oh i made 50x from dot and i don't want to take it out because it might go another 25x right but the crowd loan may take your dot into winter and you come out at dot costing 20 dollars each that might have happened as well, right? But if you take your profits now, yeah, you might be essentially be able to buy the dips in the winter when things are extremely, extremely low, or you might even be able to invest in some blue chip NFTs, right? So this is something that we need to consider. Yeah, if you exit now, you might miss out on 150K Bitcoin, but you also lock in your entire future and freedom. So the choice to make money is on your own terms, right? This is fair trade. If you, are, if you are already rich or in this case, if you have already made your money, let's write, right? So, oops. Yeah, so this is something I wanted to bring up as well because this is something I take into consideration when I'm thinking, oh, should I take my profits on DOT? How much do I need to take? Should I be going to my crowd loan? Because what's on the table now may not be offered to you two years later. But on the other hand, yeah, for all you know, it might right and you might get more out of the re rewards from the crowd loan but nothing is guaranteed so the only thing that is guaranteed is now in conclusion right the million dollar question here is that so do you want to lock up your dots for 96 weeks at this time knowing that what's coming um in the near few future right so Yes, I know some of you might say, hey, but there are some liquidity options that are available. And then again, um, I would say that this is not without limitations, right? Um, yes, I, I think, again, this is going back to the first point about projects really trying to entice people to invest. This is something great that they have came up with. I think with KSM, that wasn't available as much, but with DOT, they definitely hear that feedback and they are doing it now. But I would say for now, and I'll keep it short, is that I don't, that that is not without li limitation but ultimately i guess we all got into our dots at different points if you're a little bit late to the party you might have got in at about 20 to 25 dollars right so 
that's the thing here. We all got in at different prices. And like I said, this is definitely going to majorly affect our level of involvement with this crowd loan. Because obviously, if you get in a little bit late, later, then you have a little bit less on, on the table to lose, right? So you might say, yeah, let's, let's just go ahead with the crowd loan because my capital gains aren't as much as well. But if you're someone like Winnie, who I think apparently went in at $3.50, then she'll be panicking and she'll be tuning into my shows because she can't decide whether she wants to lock in the profits that she have now and buy a Porsche or she wants to participate in the crowd loan. For me, the en environment, the rewards um, and the potential capital gains are critical in my decision making in terms of what I want to do next and I essentially have laid it all out for you guys to think about it. All right, the rewards that you'll get, the lock-in period, the potential of dot where it can go from here, uh, and the implications that it has. So I hope that's good enough for you guys to consider and at the end of the day can apply it to what you want to do next. Alright, so that's basically all I want to cover for today. Thank you and see you. Bye.